Kage. Check, check. This is an audio slate for a dive. H1899 UTC time is. UTC time is 10.05.37. Mark.
you should have power to still count. There was a ground when we went in uh, that I think was even like lower than that, so it may not be still count. Roger.
Argus HT going up. Hello to all our viewers and hello to the late night watch. As you viewers can see, we are currently descending our ROVs. Um, and this is the third dive of our expedition. Uh, this is the expedition Lu'ua Aea Ahiki Ike Kuolona Kai. And we are currently exploring some deep sea mounts just west of the Hawaiian Islands. This evening, we will be exploring another unnamed sea mount, Sea Mount F. Our last two dives have been Seamount C and Seamount G. Um, and similar to our last dives, we are just going to be exploring these areas, collecting geological samples, um, as well as looking at these different deep sea coral and sponge ecosystems. Uh, so thanks for joining us. This is a blue water part of our dive. So if you have any questions, please type them in. We'll be here descending for probably a couple hours till we get down to the deep sea. And also, hi to the watch. <laughs> Hello, good morning. How's everyone doing? <laughs> I get thumbs up. No verbal, just thumbs up. I'll take it. We're doing great. Happy to be diving again. Yeah, me too. It's been a couple days. I think some of our viewers have been antsy for us to dive just like us. We've had a couple days of uh, some pretty big water. So we've been doing some sonar mapping in this area. But now we've gotten calm enough seas that we can get Hercules and Argus back in the water. Um, and hopefully get a couple more dives in on this expedition. See some viewers already writing in questions. Glad you're here tonight. Um, some of you asking what our target starting depth is. Um, and tonight we're going to be starting around 3,300 3, meters. Um, so we'll start at, at exploring the flank of an unnamed seamount. And then we'll slowly be moving our way up to the summit. Um, so yeah, 3,300 meters around there.
see some questions starting to come in. Thanks to our viewers for joining us. Uh, we always appreciate any questions in the blue water parts of our dive, but some people asking if there are any chances of seeing giant or colossal squid in the blue water descent. And there's definitely always a chance of seeing them. Um, I haven't ever seen a giant squid out on here. I've seen little squids sometimes, um, especially in the uh, closer to the surface on some dives. But yeah, we never, never quite know. I think, you know, those big giant squid can go pretty darn deep, but typically hang out sometimes a thousand feet, two thousand feet under the water. So we may be passing them by. Someone else wondering, how long do we stay on the boat for a time? Uh, this expedition, we're about out here for about two weeks, um, which is a little bit on the shorter end. The Nautilus can stay out up to about 40 days. Um, so really anywhere between then, depending on how far we're transiting from port um, or where we're looking to explore. I don't know if anyone has their maximum amount of time. They've been out at sea on the Nautilus. Got some old timers who may have longer stints <laughs> in one uh, in one deployment from port or in yeah. total Ooh, for... how about both yeah both since we've got time <laughs> hmm. you've probably been out here for longer than i've been in one go i i it's different when you like come into port because we do a lot of port stops with this ship um these are definitely shorter cruises than other ships i've worked on um, certainly my longest cruise ever was like 67 days. Wow. Um, and here it's, I don't think it's ever been much more than like three weeks at a time, but then like we'll do, I think six weeks has been my longest time straight on the ship. And then with three weeks in between three weeks, port stops, uh, three week port stop, three weeks, basically. 67 days is a long time, Gabby. <laughs> it felt like a long time. <laughs> Where in the world were you? That was a transit from the southern tip of South America via to um, Hobart, Tasmania via the Ross Sea. Wow. That sounds incredible. That was some though. very blue water. <laughs> yeah. But. So, yeah, the, the trips here are shorter, which means the veggies are greener. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really nice. Yeah, I bet. I want to say I've done a month on here straight, like without. Well, oh, really? Stop, but I, but I can't remember when that was. Yeah, I I believe that it's that you guys do it. I haven't done it yet. I have uh, 22 days was my longest cruise leg in a single go. 22 days? In a 086. Okay. Olympic Coast. And then... Uh, was What was the last cruise? I, was, I have 21 days. Three okay. weeks, yeah. Yeah. But my longest continuous deployment yeah. was about 60 days in 2014, 2015. And I feel like three weeks tends to be the sweet spot on this ship. We can usually get to where we want to be, do the work, and get home in that time. Still have nice fresh veggies the whole time. <laughs> Steve, where were you when you were out for... 60 days. I was out during um, the very, very early part of mobilization in 2015 um, through basically when Nautilus went to the Pacific via the Panama Canal, so through, through the entire Gulf of Mexico that season. 
um, it's a pretty long, long duration. We had just gotten some improvements to the wet lab. Uh, a lot of work needed to be done in port. Um, got a new sat dish that year. A bunch of new goodies. So a lot of a lot of cleaning to do after that. Bridge now. Uh, can we hold station? We're drifting northish. My longest cruise ever was 34 days this summer on the oh. Falcor. That was a that was a pretty long one. <laughs> was that a, where was that? We went to the Phoenix Islands. Ah, okay. A place Nautilus has passed through, but I don't think we've ever done any dives within the Phoenix Islands proper. I did about a 30 day on the Falcor one time too. Very cool cruise. You would have appreciated, Steve. Yes. It was uh, out of um, uh, the north west of Australia up to the Timor Sea to Scott Reef, which is uh, Bridge, nav. a submerging volcano. So it's out in the middle of uh, like 3,000 meters of water, but you actually. Oh, stand by. It's going to have to Anyway, sorry, Steve. It's Timor Sea. Have you? Do you know Scott Reef? I, I've heard of it, but no. I so it's like a. It's right on the. It's still in Australian waters, but it borders Indonesia, and then uh, there's a basically a volcano that is submerging, but the the cone is the edges of the cone still break the water, and but you can drive the ship right into the middle of it, and it's huge. It's like five, six kilometers across, or something like that, mm. and so you sail out and then you go into the cone and it's about 60 to 70 meters deep and it's just the the most crazy you know virgin coral reef like soft corals hard corals like wow. that i've ever seen and we were doing little we did a small rov ops <clears throat> to 60 meters and i did them all at night uh um, it was just me um and some help from the yeah, some help from the uh, the techs, and they would dive and do science during the day, and then it was just like me and one other person at night, like flying the little RV around the Falcor, <laughs> and we just got the most <laughs> stunning, stunning footage. So we did it at night because during the day you'd have all the, the ambient light coming in, kind of wrecking the video. So at nighttime, man, the place just lit up. It was just like colors and huge, like massive soft corals uh, and sponges. I remember it's a, the RV is probably like a meter long by maybe half a meter wide. And there's a sponge which I could actually fit the ROV into the <laughs> osculum. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 
it was pretty amazing. And we spent a number of weeks there just cruising around. It was just like sea snakes and sharks and corals and uh, it was just wild. Who was the research group there? I it was out of it was Ames. It was uh NASA? The, no, Ames. it was like the Australian uh, oh, Institute for Marine Science. Oh neat. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Sounds rough. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty <laughs> cool. At one stage I was by myself in the control room flying the ROV with just me and, and the mate on the bridge. <laughs> I was by myself in the control wow. room. I'm like, hmm, I got my own system here. This is going to be pretty fun. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> awesome. What does it take to get there? How long's the transit out? Uh, it was a little while. It was like a day or so. Oh, I think we, we left from Broome and then okay. came back into Darwin. Oh, awesome. At the time, Broom had a box jellyfish oh, thing going on on the yeah, beaches, yeah. so it was like, do not go to the beach. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> That's delightful. Video, Steve, what's the longest you've had to be, I'm thinking of you on land filming like wildlife documentaries where you've had to be in like one spot waiting to catch the shot? Um, I spent a few, well, for one shot or for one shoot. I mean, the longest shoot I've done is probably five weeks on one location. Okay. But trying different shots for one shot the longest. Oh. Uh, Probably like seven, 12 hour days trying for one shot. Dang. Yeah, I was trying to film a uh, bald eagle raid raiding a great blue heron nest, taking it, taking uh, chicks out of the nest. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. Took a long time. Yeah, I feel like filming birds and bugs seems hard, right? You've got to wait a long time to get the shot. Yeah, I think I think no matter what you're going for, if you if you're looking for something interesting, you know, we're always trying to film new behavior, so it's inevitably going to take a lot of patience. Yeah. But sometimes you get lucky and you get things quickly. This right now is my longest deployment on Nautilus. How long have you been out? So I've just been out for these two cruises, but this is the first time I've been over a month, which I went over a month maybe yesterday or something. Ooh. Yeah. Ashley, how about you? I know you did some marine mammal observation work. Were you out at sea for long periods of time or...? Yeah, I was um, out for about 55 days uh, last Ooh. year. Yeah, so we went about three weeks out of port, and then we came back in to refuel and everything and avoid a storm for a couple days and then went back out. But for the most part, we just stayed in one place, uh, pretty much drilling, getting sediment cores for the uh, offshore wind turbines that are getting ready to go out there, so... Yeah, not not too stressful. Just looking out for some turtles, some dolphins. <laughs> you said that was 50, 50 days? Yep, right about 50, 55 days. And I remember you said you didn't see too many mammals? Nope, <laughs> I was working the night shift, and the infrared goggles that they gave us didn't really uh, do a good job of picking up too many animals. So we saw a blob, we called it a turtle, but we weren't moving. So <laughs> just kind of noted it down and uh, submitted a report later on. 55 days is a long time to be on the night watch. Yeah. I feel yeah, like they should have <laughs> yeah, switched, switched it up. you yeah. up. They, they didn't. I mean, it was my, my first job, so 
I was I kind of got the the worst shift and uh, yeah I missed the sun I would kept taking vitamin D pills but nothing really worked so <laughs> well at least they give you the best shift on Nautilus yeah yeah 12 to 4 is the best <laughs> Yeah, at least I can see the sun out here, so it's not like I'm going to go outside and be blinded like I was last time. So. That's true. <laughs> and, like, if whales do swim by, you'll probably see them on the video camera. Yeah, So a little exactly. more exciting than the, <laughs> the dark whale watch. <laughs> Where in the world were you again when you were doing that? It was in the Atlantic, so Atlantic. right off the coast of Virginia Beach. Yep. I think that would drive me crazy to know that there might be whales and then be on the night watch. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really upset one time when somebody saw a sperm whale off in the distance <gasps> during the day. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. But it was too far away for her to get a good picture, so it really did just show up as a blob. But uh. <laughs> still, I was like, ah, oh, sperm whale. And then there was one day with about a pot of like 500 dolphins Ooh. that showed up. And that was... Apparently really incredible, but I was asleep again. Oh, so, no. <laughs> yeah. This is making me sad. Yeah, I saw the pictures, though, and it was it was really very cool. Uh. <laughs> I've only seen those, like, super pods of dolphins a couple of times, but uh, down off the coast of California, in the Channel Islands, I, li I lived in Santa Barbara for a while, and almost every time you go out, there would just be like thousands of these common dolphins and it is like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Wow. So you should go to, Cal amazing. go to California. Yeah. You can see them in the day. <laughs> definitely. That's definitely on my list. <laughs> Ashley, do you want us to wake you up if we see some whales and you're sleeping? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> I won't even be mad. I'll just be like, whales, and I'll run upstairs and just like be ready for them. Great. <laughs> I think she have a question about whales. Do we get to see beaked whales while in transit? And I haven't seen any. I think on the cruise before you all saw, you see fin whales? Is that what you saw? Yeah, I think there were fin whales. Yes, we saw fin whales. Fin whales. And then... Uh, while diving, there's actually some pretty cool footage um, that you can find on nautiluslive.org, especially on our social media accounts. But um, it looked like, was it the mouth, the beak of a beaked whale? Um, the skull. The skull, thank you. The skull of a beaked whale uh, at the bottom of the ocean. So it's on the seafloor. It's pretty neat to see. Um, so I recommend you look that up. Another question from our viewers. Why is the dive being conducted at night? Uh, we mostly timed this dive at night because we finally got some calmer seas. We've been waiting out some pretty big waves. Um, and once it got calm enough, we wanted to get our ROVs in the water as quickly as possible. Um, it doesn't really matter too much when we launch, um, as long as we have good weather, because we're going down to the deep sea. So it's going to be dark either way. Uh, so whether it's nighttime or daylight, doesn't really impact our operations too much. Another question, maybe Ashley, I'll punt this to you again. Um, anything interesting to report uh, from the last dive's collections and samples? Or do you maybe want to talk about um, some of the things that we brought to the surface from the last dives and how you process that in the lab? And uh, since you are our ocean science intern, if you want to just let us know how it's been going, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, sure. So 
You brought up a couple uh, exciting things on the last dive. There was a uh, potentially new species of cookie cutter star that was really, really cute. It looked like a little ravioli. And uh, we had a great time just like handling that and seeing it in, in real life. Um, so what we do is once we bring the samples up to the surface, we preserve them in either ethanol or freeze them and then ship them off to whatever institution might be able to use them uh, for further research and identify them. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really fun. I, I enjoy seeing the sea stars and uh, sometimes the sea pigs come up and they're very squishy, but also somehow kind of firm. And those are also very fun. Yeah, how did the sea cucumbers do on their uh, ascent? <laughs> yeah, one of them surprisingly made it and that was the one that was squishy and firm. Okay. Um, but the others kind of uh, turned into mush, which was a little bit sad. Uh, so we saved what we could and then froze it in order to send it off later on. And how did the rock sampling go? I think the rock sampling went really well, actually. We brought up a couple of really big boulders, um, so that was fun. And we got to label those, just kind of classify them. Um, and then they're going to be used for maybe some trace metal analysis later on. Um, and sent off to other institutions so that they can see what kind of uh, geologic processes are happening down there. So it's it's very cool. Yep. Do you know what our heaviest rock was from either of the first two dives? What the heaviest rock? Oh, the heaviest rock? Um, heavy. It was very <laughs> heavy. I don't have an exact weight, but it definitely took both arms to lift it and just had to kind of squat in order to carry it around the ship without falling over. So was it was pretty heavy yeah so you don't even need to go to the gym you can just do your rock squats yeah exactly that's great <laughs> Another question from viewers. Do any seabirds follow the boat thinking it's a fishing vessel? I don't know if they think it's a fishing vessel, but we have been very entertained by a lot of the seabirds um, that often try and land on the ship and then kind of fight for their place on it. Uh, so we've seen mostly different boobies that have been flying around here, um, both landing and kind of pooping all over the ship, which is fun. Um, but yeah, we definitely see some, some seabirds out here um, we haven't seen any other ships, so we're probably the nearest uh, landing pad for a lot of these seabirds, but I love them. I love those boobies. They're so fun. Ashley has been getting some great photos, actually. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> I haven't really looked at them on my computer yet, but I think a couple of them turned out okay, and it's great like nightly entertainment to watch the sunset and also see the birds fly around and try to take each other down. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. I've enjoyed it, too. <laughs> Trying to take each other down? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Last night at sunset, there was like a big battle for a couple of spots. Uh, so they were like they were like swooping in and trying to push each other off. On the a on the A frame? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Better than TV, you know? Yeah, exactly. Who needs it? Ashley, I've got a follow-up question for you, or maybe you and Steve. If animals do survive the ascent, uh, how long do they tend to survive? Like, if they've made it up, are they going to be okay? Or Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, so, unfortunately, we, we do have to uh, preserve them somehow. So, when we uh, put them in either the ethanol alcohol or freeze them, that, that does kill them. Um, but it is it is for science, and they're going to a good use, and we do that uh, try to do that very humanely, and euthanize them according to protocols. 
um, so that they're given a, a quick and painless death. But yeah, for, for science, it, it has to be done. For science. Got a viewer wondering what type of animals might we see on the way down? Uh, we don't always know. On this cruise near the surface, we've seen both a, a pilot whale and a white tip shark kind of floating around the surface um, as we've been launching or recovering the ROVs, which has been fun. But as we're going down, you may see some fish or different things. We'll, we'll be watching the blue water to see. Um, I don't know if anyone has any exciting Stories of things you've seen in blue water? I don't see too much often. We're thinking. Sometimes gelatinous things. Gelatinous things, yeah. yeah. Not, nothing really huge. We're, we're going down pretty quickly, so if we saw something, it would kind of be in and out of the frame. Flyby? Yeah. Usually squid. Mm, yeah, squid. Actually, I'm going to keep pestering you because I keep getting questions. <laughs> sure, go answer. for it. <laughs> Why do you call it the wet lab? <laughs> Great question. A couple people wonder. Yeah, um, <laughs> mostly because it, it can be wet in there. Like we do <laughs> handle uh, a lot of aquatic species and we're also using a lot of water as well. So it, it can be wet. Uh, other labs, you probably don't want things to get wet, but down there it's perfectly acceptable. And since we are at sea, you know, it's, it's going to be wet at some point. <laughs> Simple as that. Some yep. people are wondering if all labs on ships were called wet labs. Like you're a wet lab because you're at sea, and a dry lab because you're on land, which I hadn't really thought about. But yeah, I honestly don't know either. I <laughs> guess there would probably be a couple of dry labs on, on ships, but... Yeah, for us, it's it's the wet lab. Yeah, I like it. Most ships, you would call the, the data lab the dry lab. Ah, uh, data lab, dry lab. Yeah, the, the wet lab is multi-purpose room for storing of stinky things that our shipmates probably don't want to smell. <laughs> Drying sponges and corals and things. The stinky lab. Yeah. <laughs> Although it hasn't been that stinky this cruise, we typically get stinkier things when we're closer to the margins and the sediment is sulfitic and just generally noxious um, to be around for too long. But out here, there's not much of that. The, the sediments are pretty well oxygenated. And uh, the only thing that was moderately stinky we got was the piece of wood we sampled the other day. Oh, um, yeah. You know. How do, what did you guys end up doing with that? So How did what, that look once what it we came did to is um, feels like that was weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> feels like it. Uh, we did um, attempt to kind of let the stick lie in seawater for a little bit. Um, that allows some of the animals that are more mobile to crawl out into the water, which makes it easier to pick them off. At the same time, um, you know, we we did it, you know take a look and see what could be in there. We did notice some boreholes of things. Um, so we waited a little bit, about 24 hours, for it to get things to crawl out. And we did start splitting open the wood. Um, and it was a relatively fresh, air quotes, fresh <laughs> piece of wood um, because it was still really solid. Uh, but we did recover a few of those shipworms um, that are embedded and eat the wood, uh, as well as some crustaceans. Very cool. Picked it through. Is that, what do you think was boring through the wood? They, they are these um, uh, the, it's a certain type of mollusk. They are, look like worms, but they're actually mollusks. They bore in and eat the wood. Um, I do think I think they have um, microbes associated with them that are at breaking down uh, wood 
um, because normally you can't get the energy you want out of it, but I think it's a, they have a symbiosis with uh, microbes that help them, help them extract energy from the wood. 